ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and it has been a few days since I've been able to say destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder currently sitting at 1,051 subscribers. Y'all really mean the world to me, each and every one of you. I hope that you're having a nice, relaxing holiday season and a very, very soon-to-be-happy new year. Well, as New Year's change, the more things stay the same. Stun came in, what was this, like second place or something? At Anime Con 2022. I don't go to a lot of anime conventions. I went to one here uh, in Florida with a buddy of mine. And like, it was cool. It's just, it's a lot of money. It's it's not for me. I'll be, I'll be going in there with like 50 bucks to spend and I'll leave spending like 300. So there was a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh tournament at this anime convention and Lo and behold, Stun actually did well, which is very shocking. I don't know how many people were at this. I don't know how much meta there was. It could have been all rogue or like one dude playing tier element. Like I just, I do not know how many people were at this event, right? So just keep that in mind as we move forward. So regardless though, this is a stun in 2022, soon to be 2023. If you go first, you can possibly do well. If you go second, you auto lose. So keep that in mind. And we're also side decking here. Big burn. Um, Nani? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> the, this card is very much old school. And like, you can tell because it says remove from play all monsters in both players' graveyards. So what the heck does this card do? So you can only activate this card when your opponent activates a card that targets a monster in the graveyard. Remove from play all monsters in both players' graveyards. Pretty simple, right? So basically, if tier elements activate an effect in grave, then you can just activate Big Burn and banish all of the monsters, or banish all the, yeah, all the monsters, I'm about to say cards, but no, it's just monsters in both players' graveyards. This is hilarious. Like, if you're going first against tier, you just set this, and they activate a tier effect to fuse, and you just go, nah, man, Big Burn. And they're just like, um, Nani? <laughs> so, let's just dive on into this interesting hell of a deck, shall we? So, we're playing three Inspector Border because it's stun. Three copies of Guiding Ariadne. So, it's a level four scale of three Pendulum Monster. This was played in Counter Fairy way back in the day. So, its Pendulum effect is that you do not have to pay life points or discard to activate Counter Trap. So, you don't have to pay life points and you don't have to discard. And then its monster effect is that if it's destroyed by battle by card effect, you can reveal three counter traps from your deck. Your opponent chooses one for you to add to your hand, and you shuffle the rest back into the deck. Keep in mind that that monster effect does stack with the pendulum effect, similar to, say, something like Perform Mage Plush Fire, right? So, you know, if it's in the pendulum zone, it pops. You can get it. I believe that's how it works. I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've seen Guiding Ariane, but if I remember correctly, that's how it works. We're playing three copies of Fossil Dynamic because we're playing Stun. Two copies of Banisher of the Radiance because, once again, we're playing Stun. <laughs> and that's literally it for the monsters. No statue. Um, I feel like statue stun, like, as a concept, is just too slow in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, if you want to compete, you might as well just play things like Inspector Border and Fossil Dynamic and Banisher. And, like, you're just off to the races at that point. Um, and then we're playing three extra, one card of demise, three duality, one power of the guardians. So if an attack is declared involving the equipped monster, you can place one spell counter on this card. The equipped monster gains five attack and defense for each spell counter on this card. If the equipped monster be destroyed by power by card effect, you can move one spell counter from your field instead. So essentially the game plan is that you summon inspector border, activate power of the guardians. Whenever inspector border attacks or is attacked, he gains a counter. So he becomes 2,500. That is disgusting, and it's both attack and defense. So even if he gets switched to defense, then he still keeps like a big booty. And if he's destroyed by battle by card effect, you just remove a, count, a spell counter off power of the guardians instead. And then we're playing two copies of Moon Mirror Shield. I've seen a lot of stun decks recently cutting this, and I don't really know why. Uh, I see a lot of builds debate between one and three, just because you don't want to brick on these. But I feel like two copies is fine. Moon Mirror, I feel, is just so necessary in today's day and age. I mean, being able to have any monster attack be 100 higher, and even if the opponent tries to do something in damage step to increase their monster's attack, yours is still automatically 100 higher, which is hilarious. Then we're playing one copy of Armory Call, so you get to add an equip spell from your deck to your hand, and then you can equip it to one appropriate uh, monster you control. You can only activate one Armory Call per turn. So the opponent attacks into your Fossil Dine, and you go Armory Call, Equip Moon Mirror. It's like a metaverse, but for equip spells, it's really disgusting. We're playing two copies of Dogmatic of Punishment, because it's just a really good pop. You combine it with uh, Elder Entity Ints, and like your just off the races or even like say something like wind pegasus adding nister in order to have that engrave effect just on standby ready to go at a moment's notice and then we're playing three copies of compulse because i mean it's compulse one copy of phantom knight's wing three tc boo and only one macro 
you know, you don't want to brick on this, right? And I, I feel like if you were to play three, you know, it's already a card that doesn't progress your game state. It can get solemn warning because it can attempt a special summon. Um, and like, if you're going second, then this card's really dead. So like, you just, you don't want to brick on it. Uh, one sword and then the huge ass solemn brigade three strike three judgment three warning you may be thinking really avery like nine solemns yes nine solemns because think about it if you have guiding ariane on the field these cards are literally free chicken nuggies all across the table <laughs> then we're playing uh one exterior one starving venom two last warrior two ints one wind pegasus two of the ultimate falcon one utopia lightning one normal utopia one bagusco one zero boros one unicorn and then one beat cop we are playing the two waking the dragon in case you're wondering why we're playing those uh two big burn Three evenly, two waking, uh, two imperm, two storming mirror force. Jesus Christ. Like, normally people would tell you if you're playing battle traps, you're bad. But, I mean, it works here. One feather duster and three D shifter because it's just a god card in today's format. Other things to note uh, outside of what I've already talked about. I think storming mirror force is very interesting. I mean, I don't really know what you would side this in against. Obviously, like, you can side deck it going first or second, debatably, I guess, like, just at face value looking at this. Um, but, like, what would you take out? Like, maybe two TC Boo, but then, like, you're just sitting on the one of. Maybe you can take out, like, Macro. I feel like the Solemns can be somewhat interchanged. Like, you can maybe take out a Strike and a Warning for, like, two Storming Mirror Force. Like, you kind of just take out the Solemns that you don't need. Um, and then you just kind of go from there. Uh, also, too, you could take out, like, say, a strike and a warning and throw in two storming. And then, like, now you have something to go second and you're not sitting on as many solemns. Uh, that's another option. Waking the Dragon is, of course, I feel like it's really good going first or second because as soon as it leaves the field, not even uh, sent to grave, it just leaves the field and it's in the grave or banished. You special summon a monster from your deck or extra deck. You know, that gets you to Starving Venom for nasty plays. Gets you Last Warrior to destroy all of the monsters you control and neither player can summon monsters. This thing's an OG floodgate. Like, it's just disgusting. Um, this deck is just really interesting. The big burn thing, I mean, it's cute. I feel like you could maybe get away with playing something like, you know, Different Dimension Ground or something. I mean... Like, if you want to play this at your locals, I don't feel like you have to play Big Burn. Like, you could play something else. Um, you know, take that for what you will. Outside of that, like, matchup-wise, I mean, you're playing 42 cards, which is fine. I mean, you've got enough draw power, I guess. Um, is Shizu tier? Ugh, shit. Any deck just wrecks your shit if, like, you go second. Like, that's the thing with stun that you need to keep in mind, is that if you can win die rolls like it's nobody's business, you will have a great day. But, I mean, if you're losing die rolls and you're going second all day, like, a tier element player that has an established board or that has made you mill cards and they can see what you're playing, they're not going to be afraid of an inspector border if you're going second. Like, you could set a fossil dyna and just hope to God that they don't have a way to pop your set monster and hope that the dyna resolves. But, I mean, what are you really doing at that point? So... Uh, take it for what you will. I mean, it is stun. If you're able to go first, you're going to have a good time. I guess you kind of have backup plays. Like, if you can make, like, a zero Boros, but, I mean, why are you linking and stun? Like, you can't even special summon if this is on the board. Um, so, yeah, I mean, take it for what you will. It's really cool. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love seeing stun pop up. It's just, it's so going first dependent, man. It is so going first dependent. But I could be wrong. Maybe he went second all day, uh, and he just, you know, what some people's ass with this i i have no idea so guys let me know what you think about this stun deck down in the comments it's been a hot minute since we've seen stuff like guiding ariadne it feels really good to be back making videos like i said i took a few days off to just be with family for the holidays thank you so much for being patient thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video